Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about why loving yourself is the best place to start to attract love and relationship. Welcome to episode 839. I'm going to break that down in more detail in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already seen that around the broadcast somewhere. I'm an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I'll put a link for that at the back end so you can check it out for yourself. I'm a little biased. It's a good book. Um, and I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women and why I stand for women in so much of my work. And also what led to these talks over two, excuse me, almost three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, which is why today we're episode number 839. And the topic today again is why... Loving yourself is the key to having, sorry, loving yourself is the key to attracting love and healthy relationship. Something like that. <laughs> There's a theme here, you may get that from when I explain this. So let me break into this and talk about it a bit more so you have some clues and some direction to go with. So, if you haven't watched my broadcast before, where have you been? I'll put the, I will put links at the back end by the way you can watch these talks. And also, by the way, this is a Facebook Live I started with it will go onto YouTube later on in case you're watching it there so in interaction with people I'll hopefully remember to exp to say what they wrote so you can read it so you can hear it when you're on YouTube I think it makes sense so self-love it's a very overrated excuse me very underrated yes under <laughs> which way I was going though underrated practice skill and discipline because people are trained in this culture, in our wonderful modern society, to keep going, well, I'm looking out there for love and going to get attraction relationship out there and find the person I want out there. You see a theme there? This, is unfortunately, is the paradigm we've been taught by our culture and society. And I've talked about this in great detail before, so I'm going to skip the deep talk and get to this, the highlights, which is this. We tend to think and this is actually a trap we all fall into in all areas of life. We tend to think that we'll be happy when we get whatever is out there to us, whether it's the right career, the relationship, the car, the house, the money, etc., etc. It's a paradigm that we live in in this culture. This is unfortunately is the modern society we live in. It's about got to get, 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 or take, take, take to have what we want so we feel okay. This unfortunately is a lie. It's also kind of like Chinese food. In the, when you take, eat Chinese food, you're hungry two hours later, that whole thing. Although for me, that, never, that was never the case. I was, never hung, I was always full when I had Chinese food, but that's me. But the, the, teach, the example of that is the framework where you're never satisfied. That when you have it, when you get what you, you think you want, two minutes later, you're hungry for something else or something more or replacement. Which is why in relationship conversations, oftentimes people, and many special, well, I say many especially, but I think both genders have it to a degree, the idea of being um, committed to a long-term relationship is overridden by desire for what's next, the desire for something better, the desire for something new and different from what you already have. Some, if you're watching this and you're feeling that urge, then this may be speaking to you directly. So pursuing relationship, seeking relationships, swiping on the dating apps, continually looking for love out there in all the wrong places, as I like to say, because it's a good song quote I use is not the right path. It's an opportunity, it's a way of doing things, but I don't recommend it at all. And it's especially true for the women. Ladies, speaking to you directly on this one. The power you have in your femininity is to magnetize what you want. It's to draw in what you want, it's to attract what you want in area of your life. Now, I'll say it this way, like bees around honey, Hi, Lorelei. So you're ready to find your soulmate, but not through dating sites. Good. I've got some advice about that. Although dating, dating sites can work if it's, as long as it's not the way you're doing it, if that makes sense. I'll explain them more in a second. So, well, yes, Lorelei. Yeah, yes, be who you want to attract, although there's more to it than that. So let me, let me explain, because you're, you're jumping ahead. <laughs> um, the challenge of being, in, for a woman especially, the challenge of being in the feminine is you attract in everything you want. The, the, the challenge, excuse me, is that you're attracting all the time, not always what you want, because the thing about being a, in your feminine is you need, 
you will it will do you 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 will, you will do better if you know what you're looking for. I'll say it that way because the thing is, what you it's almost like when you are being a magnet to everything until you discern and define what you want, you're going to receive everything versus just what you want. So you're going to get the good, the bad, the ugly. Like 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 bees being attracted to honey, you may get a lot of bees you don't want, whereas you want something different. So being clear about what you want and focusing on that clarity is a good step to start with. And as Laura I put about not using the dating apps. See, the, see, if you're using the dating sites, the dating apps to search for what you want, and that's your primary focus, I agree with her what she said, it's not the right approach. However, once you know what you really want and you're clear inside with what you want, and as I started with the topic in, in hand, which is about loving yourself first, then using the dating apps as a resource to go through of many different places to choose from is okay because the thing is attracting what you want for a relationship ladies doesn't work if you just sit at home and, and sit in your couch and fold your arms and wait you'll go old and gray doing that nothing happens so you need to interact with the world through either interaction physically in person different places or through dating apps dating sites social media etc but before you do that as i said start with where you are so self-love is a requirement in my book with my clients I, I speak about it i coach about it that's why i've got a self-love meditation I, I sell it's a guided meditation which i'll put the link in the back end so you can check it out for yourself because once you do love yourself first of all your desperation will not be visible i'll say that one again when you are loving yourself first this is true for men and women by the way when you love yourself first your desperation doesn't show because when you don't love yourself first, your desperation is front and center. Yes, not a pretty picture. The, the least attractive quality in a woman, just checking if this is true or not, one of the least, <laughs> one of the least attractive qualities in a woman is when she is um, desperate and needy for love. And it's true for men as well. The one of the most unattractive qualities of a man is when he's desperate and needy for love as well it's repellent and unattractive it's not what you want to attract which is why i am passionate about saying when you love yourself first it's not a selfish act like an egotistical act it's a self-supportive act because you find yourself in a place where you don't need that person to love you to enjoy the love the healthiest relationships i know of are when where neither where, where both partners don't need each other they love each other they want each other but they don't need each other you know, the, the quote from Jerry Maguire I use all the time, you, you complete me. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry, i got to call it. Because until you know what you really want and you honor yourself first, that you complete me thing is a trap. That's a desperation. That's that feeling that, and, 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 and let me say this, this true, this too, it is tempting and, so, and sometimes so fulfilling when someone's desperate and you fulfill their desperation. But I guarantee you, it's going to wear out fast. It's going to be horrible. Because desperation is a pit of despair, not something you want to play in. So when you clearly are not in desperation, when you love yourself first, again, respect, honor, appreciate who you are, so that when you are indeed looking for a relationship, it's an, in, an enjoyable exploration versus a, I've got to have it, got to have it, got to have it energy. You'll see the difference? But it starts with self-love first. It's so easy to say, well, I don't need anybody, that's fine. But part of you is yearning, crying out for that. And unless you fill that need up first inside yourself by loving yourself, caring about yourself, taking care of yourself, all simple things you can do, then the desperation is going to override it. And so it doesn't matter. Oh, by the way, second sidebar or parallel is when you do love yourself first, it's like putting on amazing makeup for men and women. <laughs> Meaning that when you love yourself first, it makes you more attractive this is actually a side effect of loving yourself. So first of all, when you love yourself, the desperation you may have had for a part of a relationship is no longer there because you don't need the relationship to feel whole. You do feel whole already. Secondly, though, when you love yourself fully, it makes you also more attractive to those around you because you don't need them. And you come across as being self-sufficient, self-fulfilled, self-supportive. And those are good qualities in any partnership. So ideally, your partner's doing the same thing that you're looking for that you're doing yourself. So hi Laura, let me saying there. So you haven't been in a relationship for almost three years and it feels empowering. You chose not to be in one in order to continue the personal development and work in your business. I totally understand. I've been doing that for the last uh, 12 years. 
So just to, just to support what you said, I, I understand where you're totally coming from. So hi, Tina. Nice to see you my broadcast. So the recognition is that when you start to learn how to love yourself first as a fundamental key to practice, then you become less desperate, you become more fulfilled, and you become more attractive. All good wins. And that idea about being more attractive is not, you're not doing self-love so you can be more attractive, just to be clear. The side effect of loving yourself is you become more attractive. So that when you meet somebody, you are in a place where your joy, your light, your love shines through your eyes. It's a very attractive thing. Let me tell you, when I, when I meet people, men and women, who really love themselves, and I don't mean that they're full of themselves, I don't mean the egotistical thing. Plus you're divorced twice, so you wanted to ensure you weren't following patterns. I, yes, Laurel, I smart woman, very smart woman, yes. Part of my coaching my clients is to resolve those past patterns that are imprinted because they will tend to repeat unless you stop them. So I'm glad you're seeing that and you're taking care of that, smart woman. I reckon, I'm, I, I applaud you for both those choices, for both working yourself and to um, undo those patterns that run, were running in the past. So yes, that was a whole other talk I've done many times. So again, back to the point that I want to make clear and adamant, I'm making this point clear so you get it, <laughs> that it regularly comes down to supporting yourself. We've been in-trained and programmed for many, many, many years by love songs and movie, movie um, um, dialogue and books that promote the idea of being codependent. I've written about it, I've talked about it, I've spoken about it, I've coached about it more than enough times to say that codependency is not the solution. It's, the, it's a trap. Because by being codependency, you're limiting yourself and you're limiting the relationship. So freedom comes from loving yourself again. The reality is for most of us, is we, well, I should say most of the culture in our world, is we're looking for the other person to make us feel complete. Again, Jerry Maguire, you complete me. We're looking for that person to make us feel all right. We're looking for that person to validate us. Loving yourself first is self validation and it may sound something's wrong with that because you don't teach that in this in this culture but the truth is when you do love yourself the validation is inside of you there's um i was actually on somebody else's facebook live yesterday and i quoted uh, eleanor roosevelt saying what you think of me is none of my business that understanding also applies to when you where you are at work about family dynamics when you love yourself first not only are you more attractive to a relationship, not only are you more available to be in a relationship without needing it to fulfill you, it also means that for those people who don't get on with you, you don't really care about. From a place of detachment, not a place of like, <clears throat> don't care about them. It's not judgment. It's a place of detachment. So self-love is a very powerful tool in many different ways. It also means that when you go home to fa on Thanksgiving, for example, or go to see your family, those hooks they put into you don't stick quite as hard. You become free to love yourself because the self-love detaches you from those outside influences. And it also removes the baggage from past relationships as well. It's one of the pieces. There's more to it than that. So my, my emphasis today, as you may have guessed, <laughs> excuse me, is to love yourself first. It's a potent piece of work that I teach. It's, potent because it's why I've got the self-love meditation that I sell. Again, link will be in the comments at the end. Because when you learn to love yourself first, you practice discipline of self-love, whether it's what I do in my meditation, which is every day for 30 days, or just do things that are self-caring activities. And when you stop judging yourself as much, because many of us, I've been there myself, get caught up in the self-judgment trap as well. When you free yourself of self-judgment and you love yourself as well, both of those work together and in harmony, then it makes you more fulfilled, it makes you less dependent upon relationship, and it makes you more attractive to be in relationship. So ladies especially, because again, you are attracting what you want. The more you're loving yourself, you can focus your love, your intention and your attraction energy towards what you really want that's gonna to add to the wholeness that you already are. For us men, we manifest, that's if a friend of mine put it that way, because it's man manifest, it was why it took that way. We go out into the world, but we're still attracting through activity in the world to be in the right place. But the same thing applies. Loving ourselves first, yes, men love ourselves first. When we're loving ourselves first, we become more available to meet someone else who loves themselves. So ladies and men, ladies and gents rather, men and women, loving yourself first is the key to healthy relationships for both genders. And this also applies to gay or straight, doesn't make a difference. This is how you become a healthier participant and a healthier partner in a relationship. Please, for the sake of your next partner, don't keep looking for them to make you feel whole. 
love yourself first be free to love avail to your next partnership so your relationship becomes additive becomes whole becomes free so again I'll put a link in the comments for my self love practice because I'm passionate about this as you may have guessed um, and be willing to take care of yourself so yes yeah, self love as I mentioned but self care practices I've got a new course that I'm putting together which will be a, a, a it's, it's been on the back burner for a while but it's coming back on the front burner it's about how to start taking care of yourself first especially when you're single so you can become more attractive and attracting to what you want from a place of wholeness. So again, links in the comments. My book will be in the comments. My self-love guided meditation will be in the, be in the comments. And since uh, Laurel I brought up about past relationship patterns, that's in my coaching. So I'll put a link in the comments for a conversation with me so you can learn about how I can help you. And I'll give you some tips along the way as my gift to you. So with that, I thank you for watching my broadcast. This is a big topic so I hope you take it to heart and you receive this and you take it in because self-love really is the key to freedom for yourself for your relationships for your life if you're coming in late please go back and watch from the beginning hi Libby nice to see my broadcast um, and take a look at my, my my offerings the links I put in the comments they are there to assist you so with that I just want to give you a quick note where the replays are so you can find them um, this is my daily Facebook Live, in case you didn't already know. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. You can watch me here. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which if you like my page, which is barryselby.author, you can watch all the replays there. And then on my YouTube channel, because I have a YouTube channel for backup and for other uses too. But if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, um, that's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all my broadcasts. So I hope this made sense to you. And if you, thanks for all coming in, by the way. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Mary. Please go watch from the beginning. I'm signing off now because I have to go to an event. Um, yeah, I'm going to head out in shortly. So thank you for watching. I appreciate being with me. Check out the links. And if you have any thoughts, questions, comments about this, please put them below. When I sign off, I'll respond later on. And I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care. Bye.